Okay, I think it's time to start our last presentation from this first slot, and it's my pleasure to invite Mr. Liviu Josan to tell us more about rebound sensing of deltas. Hello, morning. Can you hear me? Everybody come in, there are a few spots left. <laughs> Don't need to stand. So, um, and now for something completely different. Any fan of uh, Monty Python today? <laughs> okay. So, my name is Livi Josan. I'm uh, originally from Romania, uh, working in the United States for now 28 years. And welcome to Romania. I'm going to talk about uh, something different, deltas. Nothing to do with open source except in the last slide. So let's see, let's, let's see how you fare through this. Some technical problems. I was too, too careful to uh, follow the guidelines of the organizers. But it's fine now. Page up, page down. OK, let's see. This, this, does it work? OK. So um, I'm a marine geologist. And one of my focus is uh, uh, the coast. We know that many people like the coast. They want their own little villa to live there. But uh, we are ruining the earth. And the, the coasts are, are the front line of, of this uh, war with nature. Uh, among uh, the most endangered coasts are deltas, which are very flat landscapes and very expansive. And uh, because of that flatness, they are uh, easily uh, overrun by sea level rise and other problems that we uh, put pressure on the coast. So in the upper picture is a um, photograph of, uh, from the Danube Delta, how a delta should look uh, in uh, natural conditions. And below, it's a shot from uh, Vietnam in the Mekong Delta. and. Uh, at some point was similar. But now um, many, many deltas are um, occupied for different activities, cities, agriculture, uh, different uh, fisheries. And why are deltas so important? Because they are cradles of life. They are very productive. People were attracted to these regions uh, for a long time. Some people say that uh, civilization started in deltas, like in Mesopotamia. So we are in love with deltas, but we are destroying them in the same time. And if they will be left to their own device, even if uh, sea level rises, uh, they would adapt. But we don't like that. We want to, be, to stay everything the same forever. And that's not the way to do, to work in, in, on the coast. Oops. So what's good about deltas? We, we just discussed. They are expansive, they are productive, they are biodiverse, uh, and they can be lost. And this is how it looks, a shot from the Mississippi Delta from a plane I took uh, three years ago. There were marshes all around, but now there are only left the natural levees. Uh, this is uh, a very depressing trip that I had there. And that's a picture of how the Mississippi Delta looked in the past. And everything is red. In red is already lost from 1937. Deltas are very complex. It's on the left side of this. But we want to keep them simple and see how we can help. So what do we do? Their, uh, deltas are also really beautiful. You can see them from space their beauty. And not any delta doesn't look like an, any other one. Uh, you can see here a few examples, our Danube. And if you are here in Romania for the first time, you should come back and see that jewel. That's the Danube delta. But they are uh, different in terms of landscapes because they are under different factors that influence their evolution. And how can you put this variability 
in processes and in shape together. What is the essence of a delta? How can we help them stay above sea level? And that's from a paper that we put together in 2014. And uh, the rationale here is a delta is a new land built by mud that's brought down by rivers. If you don't have mud, you don't have a delta. So we looked at, on this side, the maximum sediment that a river brings and the minimum sediment to keep it uh, at sea level. And that's the way to bring them together. That's the essence of a delta. So we, we can see here there are uh, logarithmic scales and one to one uh, ratio is uh, where the red splits from the, from the black. Everything that is in, in the red zone are deltas that have a deficit of sediment. Everything that's in the black zone, they are healthy. Uh, the size of the uh, symbol in the graph uh, expresses the size of the delta. So the big circle, it's over 10,000 kilometers square. These are huge mega deltas, mostly in Asia. Danube Delta here, it's a medium-sized delta, and there are small deltas, like in Western Europe, the Ebro. So, if we want to put them, if we want to save deltas all together, we have to move them from the red zone to the black zone. Now, if we... Uh, dam rivers, and we did this for a hundred years. We put dams along the river, along the tributaries. We stopped the sediment behind dams. So the red zone migrates. More deltas become endangered. And that's the true picture of the deltas today. The red zone migrates. That's where we are now. Only small deltas are viable. So to keep them alive, we need more sediment from somewhere, either bypass dams or bring new sediment there. So the question is, what's to be done? That's a time-honored uh, question in every aspect of life. This is my friend, Lenin. Heavily dammed rivers carry less sediment. More efficient use of available sediment can mitigate land loss. He didn't say that, I said that. So, Let's look at the picture of uh, deltas around the world, starting with Ganges Brahmaputra, that is a huge one, and going down. And what do we show here? Deltas first, they build into the sea, so that's called progradation. They also keep above sea level, and that's called accretion. And we can see here, in million tons per year, the sediment that goes for progradation is dominant. To keep it above sea level, it's a very small slice in blue. Two, so that gives us a, 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 an idea, a solution toward the solution. So if, if that sediment that goes and it's lost in the ocean is somehow kept on the deltaic plane, we have a chance to keep some deltas alive. Now, what's, this is the situation in natural conditions before putting dams on. Now, the red uh, arrows show, in, again, in uh, logarithmic scale, these are huge changes. Uh, what was the decrease in sediment after dams were put in place? And you can see big changes, mostly negative. So we have to forget about that sediment, but still, the gray zone, it's huge, and that's lost to the sea. How can we keep that? sediment, ah, excuse me, on the deltaic plane. So there are several solutions that are being tried and or will be tried. And one is to make more breaches from the channels toward lakes or marshes. It's called crevasse plays. Or build internal deltas in lakes that would trap sediment. And that's being tried now in the Mississippi. The other way is to move the Oops. Move the course of the river altogether. Move it in another way, in another uh, 
favorable position and build a new delta. And that's being tried. This is the Brazos Delta near Freeport in Texas in 19, 1930s, and they built a new delta. Uh, or take an example from young deltas that trap a lot of sediment, and that's the Kilia subdelta in, uh, in the Danube. And what is striking here, and that's in, in the uh, juvenile stage of a delta, you have a lot of channels that spread sediment on the delta. In the, uh, in the more mature stage, the number of channel decrease, uh, channels decrease, and more sediment is moved toward the ocean. Where do I have the time? Excuse me. Okay, hurry up. The other way to uh, uh, put sediment on the delta is to put organic sediment, uh, marshes. The plants that uh, die and rot, they leave behind uh, organic sediment. And that also keeps uh, a delta plane above sea level. So now if we put marsh sediment, that's the situation without them. We add that. We, excuse me. This is with sediment, 90% organics. You can see a lot of uh, deltas move in the good zone, but you cannot have 90% organic. As a geologist, I know that organic sediments in the delta that's preserved is about 10%. So, and they don't do well if they, they don't receive water and mud during the floods. So what's realistic? Maybe 50%? Still, a lot of deltas are, are saved. And for that, you, we need to bring more water and mud toward the delta. And that's Danube Delta here. You see the a network of red channels that were not built to keep the delta alive. They were built for fishermen since 1930s. But as an experiment, in ad inadvertent experiment, they also keep the delta in good condition. Uh, Danube is more stable than other deltas around the world. And we can do that in many other deltas. Another solution is to leave a delta uh, to its own device. And this is a modeling study that we did. If you leave the delta under the influence of waves, it's eroded and builds the coast on the sides. And you have healthy coasts on the sides. They are seen as uh, giant sand uh, engines. So we're heading now toward designing deltas. We need to design deltas to keep them alive. And now we come to open source and via remote sensing. These are huge animals, deltas. Uh, you cannot study them in the field with, uh, uh, a, without a lot of money, a lot of people. Uh, so the solution is not in the field. The solution is above. And I just want to present a start for this. It's called Delta X. It's a project that starts this year, and I'm part of it, but it's, lead, it's led by uh, my friends at uh, JPL in Pasadena. It's a NASA-funded project that starts in the Mississippi. And briefly, we want to fly sensors with the NASA planes over the Delta. In the same time, have uh, teams on the ground and measure different properties that interest us. Uh, and input this data, calibrated data, into a model, fully uh, uh, a full model, fully uh, stochastic model, and try to predict where the water and sediment will go, and in the end, design where that sediment and water goes. What do we want to keep alive? And that's the physics of it. Sediment goes toward the marsh when we have floods through overflow. We want to understand the physics. We need the parameters to input in the model. And we get those from above. So water surface slope in the channels that gives us discharge. Water levels change in the marshes where it could be in the field it's hard to measure. It's very small and hard to access. Sediments in the water, how much sediment load exists. And vegetation structures to tell us what's going to be there, how, mu how much is going to be left over after they die. And the field data for calibration, we measure discharge, sediment, uh, accretion rate of, of mud, 
uh, vegetation structure, organic accretion, and everything goes into a model uh, that uh, hindcasts and forecasts what's happening in the delta. So we'll have a, a few campaigns with uh, repeat pass radar interferometry for water level change, uh, for water flow, uh, in situ measure for calibration, spectroscopy for vegetation, and uh, radar interferometry for water height and slope. We'll cut vegetation and measure it. That's gonna be done with the NASA planes uh, in different stages of the tidal cycle. Uh, and we'll have teams on the ground that will do measurements in the same time. And another important component is the monitoring of the, of the different properties in the delta with stations that are where we can get the data in real time. And, that's, and these are the cream stations that now have a history in the Mississippi for, for uh, 20 years and they are improved. Uh, better and better. Is it, is it doable? Yes, we tested that and this is a, for example water surface elevation for 20 kilometers at the resolution of two centimeters. I'm sorry. Uh, water surface in the marshes and the accretion rate based on the sediment and now open source. Why do we need open source? because that's the distribution of deltas in the world. Almost a billion people on this earth depend on deltas uh, in a way or another. And more than us, life in the sea and in the rivers depends on deltas. So this, this cannot be done with closed solutions. It only can be done through a system of monitoring, modeling, and sharing that uh, only the open source can offer. Thank you very much. Thank you for the very interesting presentation. Do we have any questions? Come on. <coughs> only in the United States? Uh, yeah. During the project, you'll study only the USA uh, deltas? Uh, it starts there. Our uh, goal is to extend it through um, satellites, microsatellites, for to cover in the end the entire the entire Earth or the entire region regions with deltas. Wait, yeah, please. Are you familiar with the Building with Nature initiative in the Netherlands? Yes, yes, it's a wonderful initiative. And also, Open Earth from Deltaris and yes. Yes, we are partners with them. We actually work with the Delta 3D to improve for the modeling. Thank you very much for coming. Any other questions? We still have some time left. I think I have a question. Sure. You mentioned several parameters that you are interested in, but you didn't mention anything about um, carbon sequestration, which might yeah. play an important role yeah. When discussing about deltas. It's not, it's not a direct objective, but you can imagine that the data that we collect will be useful to that. Uh, it's not something that we stated in the, in the project. But uh, once you measure organic accretion, once you measure the type of sediment that comes in the river, uh, yeah, carbon, carbon, carbon storage and carbon release in deltas is still a, a gray area. So, thank you. Hydrologic, uh, uh, hydrological model, uh, modulation of water in that area? Yes, so uh, the idea is to get discharges from slope in different channels, uh, uh, channels as small as five meters through the radar and calibrate that with direct measurements and input it into, into a hydrological model and a morphological model and a vegetation model. So we'll have output hydro hydrology in the channels and the marshes and we'll have many other things beyond that.
Thank you.